Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem valid parentheses string. We've solved a few parentheses related problems on this channel, but this is a pretty unique one. So we're given a string S and it could contain three types of characters, a left parenthesis, a right parenthesis, and a wildcard character. And the wildcard character could uh, be uh, three possibilities. It could be an empty string, which is the simplest, right? So basically in that case, we would ignore the wild card. It could be a right parenthesis or it could be a left parenthesis. So uh, each time we reach a wild card, uh, in terms of a decision tree, we really have three branches, right? We have three different things we could consider. It could be a space, it could be a left parenthesis, it could be a right parenthesis. So already we're kind of getting the intuition of how to solve this problem, or at least enumerate all possibilities. Our goal is to determine if the given string could be valid. If it's possible, we return true. If it's impossible, we return false. And you can go over this to understand what makes parentheses valid and invalid. The main thing is as you scan through a string, suppose this one, what has to really happen is that every left parenthesis has to have a matching right parenthesis and the matching right parenthesis has to come after the left parenthesis and the natural order for it is kind of like first in first out so you can see we have a left parenthesis then we have another left parenthesis then we have a right parenthesis and this right parenthesis matches this one okay then we have another left parenthesis then we have a right parenthesis this matches the most recent one and then we have another right parenthesis and this matches this one but suppose we had a slightly different string maybe we have three right parentheses in a row, this would be invalid, and you can see why. Uh, th these two match each other, great. This one matches this one, great. But the right parenthesis then comes before the left parenthesis. We can't have that. And this is one way to understand that, but the easiest way to know that we have an invalid parenthesis combination is that at any given point, uh, of the string, the number of left parentheses that we have can never be less than the number of right parentheses. And you can see that that happens here, right? We have two left parentheses, then we have three right parentheses. And we are never going to be able to recover from this because at one point in time, we had more right parentheses than we had left. It doesn't matter if we get more left parentheses, we cannot recover from this ever. And that's how you know it's invalid. Let's take a very simple input string and then determine if this is valid or not. And we can tell that it is. How would it be valid if the wild card was empty and it would look like this, right? Just a left and a right parenthesis. But how can we do that uh, brute force? And we, we could possibly have more complex strings. How could we determine that? Well, the brute force is gonna be a decision tree because if we weren't given any wild cards, we have a very simple algorithm just to scan through the parentheses to know if they were valid or not, just like I talked about. But with wild cards, there's lots of possibilities. We're gonna go through each character in the string and have a decision tree. So first character we see is a left parenthesis. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and then we get to the wild card, right? When you get to a wild card, that's when you actually need to branch. We don't need to just branch when we get to a regular parenthesis because that's already determined. It could be another left parenthesis. It could be a space or it could be a right parenthesis. Uh, and then we're going to get to the third character. Uh, but we have to do that third character. It's already determined it's a right parenthesis, but we have to do it for all three of our branches now. So you can kind of see if we had a lot of wild cards, uh, this decision tree would get very big. But let's just finish it up real quick. So here we'll have a right parenthesis. Here we'll have a right parenthesis. And here we'll have a right parenthesis. So among all three of these combinations, you can see that this is invalid because it has two open. It has two left, one right. That's invalid. This one you can see is also invalid. It has one left and then two right. Uh, but the middle one, you can see it is valid. It has a left, a space, and then a right. And the way we could do this problem recursively, the decision tree portion is kind of simple. We would make three recursive calls every time uh, we got to a wild card. But to determine if it was valid or not, one, uh, we would keep track of how many left parentheses we had, how many open left parentheses we had. At this point, we had one open uh, if we're just considering the middle branch. Here, we also had uh, one open. And then by the end of it, we had zero open, zero left open parentheses. By the end, we should have exactly zero because they should all match each other. And the number of left open should never be negative. For example, if we started like this, right? If we started with a right parenthesis, that's automatically invalid. Okay, so that's the recursive solution. And you can actually add dynamic programming. And by dy dynamic programming, I mean memoization. That's the easier way to do it uh, to this uh, recursive solution. 
And I will actually link the code to that in the description if you wanna take a look. Uh, the overall time complexity of, first of all, the brute force solution is in the worst case going to be a three to the power of N because that's how many branches we have. N is gonna be the size of the string because that's gonna be the height of this decision tree. But when you add memoization to this, the overall time complexity actually becomes N cubed. Uh, and the way we would do that is by caching, and we would cache uh, with two parameters. One would be i, which is the index of the position that we're at, and the other parameter would be uh, the number of left open parentheses at any given point uh, in the string that we're at. Now, uh, caching with two different parameters like this will cause us to have a two-dimensional matrix. Uh, the size of that matrix is going to be n squared, but to calculate each value in that matrix would would take big o of n time complexity that's how i'm getting n cubed from uh, but i don't expect you to understand all of this if you want to understand it a bit more you can uh, look at the code that i'll have in the description but there's actually an even more efficient way to solve this problem and that is the greedy solution and it's very difficult to come up with now even if you can't come up with the greedy solution by yourself it might still occur to you in a real interview that maybe there's some kind of trick to this problem that if only you could figure it out you would be able to solve this problem in linear time. Is there a trick like that? Well, hopefully in a real interview, your interviewer would give you a hint for that, but let's see how we could maybe come up with it ourselves. We know that one variable is gonna be a mandatory for us, and I'm gonna call it left. It's gonna be the number of left open parentheses we have. And when we reach the first character, it's a left open parenthesis. Initially, our total is going to be zero, but uh, after seeing the left open parenthesis, we increment it by one. Now we have one left open parenthesis. And that would be very easy. Uh, suppose we didn't have the wild card, then we would have a right parenthesis and we would do the exact opposite. We'd say, okay, our left uh, open parenthesis has been decremented by one. So now we're back to zero left open parentheses. And that makes sense. But wild cards create multiple possibilities. And three exactly right one the simplest would be to ignore this right uh, if we ignore it okay we're still left with one open parenthesis that's the simplest but it could there could be multiple possibilities right and we need to consider all possibilities if we want to be sure that we can determine if this is possibly valid or not possibly valid we do have to consider every possibility so another possibility is this wild card could be a left open parenthesis if that's the case we would take our left and actually increment it by one to make it two. But another possibility is that this uh, wildcard could be a right parenthesis, and in that case, we would take this and then decrement it by one. See how this wildcard is creating some divergence for us. We can't maintain all possibilities in a single variable like we could before. So this is kind of a hint to you that maybe we need two variables. And let's go to the third character before we actually create those two variables. Now we have a right parenthesis. Now what are we gonna do? Well, with right parentheses, we're gonna decrement our left count, but now we have to decrement two variables. So this would become one, and then this would become zero. What do these actually represent? The reason we have two in the first place is from the wild card. Basically, these are gonna represent the, I'm gonna call it the left max and the left min. And what that means is what's the uh, maximum left open left parentheses we could have and what's the minimum open left parentheses we could have depending on how we choose our wild card. Okay, now let's go to another character. And again, we have a wild card. Now, let me explain to you what these two variables are supposed to represent. They're supposed to represent the range of possibilities. We could have zero left open parentheses, or we could have one left open parentheses, depending on how we chose the first wild card. But now we have a second wild card. Now, if we made this a left open parentheses, that would mean it's possible for us to have two left open parentheses. So we would update our left max in that case, but if we made it a closing parenthesis, then we would wanna update our minimum because this is supposed to represent all possibilities. So let's do exactly that. If uh, let's increment our left max to be two, then let's decrement our left min to be negative one. But hold on for a second. This isn't just the range of possibilities. This should also be the valid range of possibilities. We should never have our left min become negative because that would imply that the choices we made caused our left min to be negative and we know that's invalid. So we're never gonna allow our left min to become negative. If it ever does become negative, we're gonna reset it back 
to be zero. So now you can see that these are the range of possibilities between zero and two. And now we're just gonna continue through the rest of the array. We're gonna get a left open parenthesis, which uh, we're gonna increment both of our uh, variables. So this is gonna be one, this is gonna be uh, three, uh, and then we're gonna get a closing parenthesis. So this is gonna be decremented down to zero. This is gonna be decremented down to two. Uh, and now, how do we know if we can return true or false? Is this valid or is it not valid? Well, we know it's balanced if the left open parenthesis count is zero. So does zero fall in uh, between our range right now? It does because our left min is exactly zero. So that's how you know we can return true if our left min is equal to zero. And before we get into the code, I just want to show you another way that our solution could have been invalid. Uh, suppose, you know, our string had two uh, closing parentheses and then two open. Of course, our left min is never going to be uh, negative because uh, if it becomes negative, we reset it back to zero. But if our left max does become negative, uh, in this case, it'll be negative two uh, from this, uh, at this after we've seen these two. That's how you know we can return false because it'll never be valid. We'll never recover from this because if the maximum number of left open parentheses we could have is negative, that means there's no choices we could possibly do to make this valid. Okay, so before we get into the code, as you could tell from this algorithm, we don't even need any extra space. So the space complexity is big O of zero and we only need to scan through the string once. So the time complexity is big O of N. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. And like I said, we're gonna have two variables variables left min and left max initially they're both going to be a zero and then we're just going to go through every single character in the string if we get a open parenthesis a left open parenthesis we're going to increment both of our variables so left min and left max are going to be incremented by one because here we don't really have any choices we have to increment the count by one and in the opposite case where we do have a closing parenthesis, we also don't have a choice, so I'm gonna copy and paste this, but in that case, we're going to be decrementing the count by one for each of them. Uh, and the else case is when we have a wild card, we don't have to specify that character. And this is the part where we do have a choice. So I'll copy and paste again, but with the left min, we're gonna decrement that count in the case that we have a closing parenthesis, and in the case that we choose the wild card to be an open parenthesis, we're going to increment the left max by one. But remember, if the left max ever is negative, that means it's impossible for our parentheses to be valid. So in that case, we're just going to immediately return false. Uh, but in the similar case where our left min is negative, we're not necessarily going to return false because that would mean our left max is not negative, so it technically is possible for the string to still be valid. We, we don't want to continue assuming that our string up until this point is invalid, so we're gonna reset it back to zero. And if this part is unclear, and I don't expect it to be too clear because it's actually complicated to understand, this is the string that I would kind of run the code on, and this is the example I would really try to understand if you don't uh, get this part. This string is impossible to make valid, no matter what we choose for the wild card. But if you don't include this if statement in your code, you'll end up returning true for this when you should be returning false. That's kind of what I'll, I'll leave it at. But other than that, once we exit the loop, we will return true if the left min is equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, then we return false. Now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.